How's it going everybody? Welcome to the channel. This is Big Day Dave and this is a map tour for a new mod map to Farming Simulator 22 called Groshnen. Shnin. Grosh Groshnin. Grosh Groshnin. How's it going everybody? Welcome to the channel. This is Big Day Dave and this is a map tour for a new mod map to Farming Simulator 22 called Groshnin. And we're going to start with the description from the mod hub and it reads Welcome to Groshnin, an idyllic village near Gottingham. The surrounding landscape is characterized by small and large hills. Here in the Enhancement region, there are many opportunities for agricultural activities, whether the small equipment or impressive large machines. 76 fields and meadows, 0.1 hectares to 39.3 hectares. Five farms, one cow farm, one biogas plant, two productions, six sales stations, own AI license plates, livestock dealer, customized soil type map for precision farming DLC, five new fruit varieties, four of the combine harvester, rye, triticle, spelt, and field grass, and one for the mower, green rye. There are mods required for this map, starting with the composite machine sheds by Vertex Designs and Niggles, the half duty shelves by Deer Mindener, Old Farm Package by DMI20MM Normandy, the Dutch Shed Pack by Raff Farmer and DMI20MM Normandy, Half Timber Farm Buildings by Vertex Design, the Thur Thuringen Farm Set by Caster DS Agrar Service, and Bale Storage by Caster DS Agrar Service. This map was created by Nick and is 145.56 megabytes to download. And if we take a look at the map, this is what it looks like. We start out here in the very northernmost region of the map. You start out by owning farmlands number 3, 13, and 80. 3 being a field with no product in it, 13 being another field with no product in it, and 80 being your starting farm. Field prices do vary very greatly because you get a very wide range of sizes for your fields. Starting up here in the north, we have a couple, 16,000, 40,000, uh, 24,000, 46,000. Uh, we got a couple small ones kind of baked in here, 26,000, 23,000. Down in the south of the map here, 25. I, you, you get a lot of really good kind of starting fields, and then it just continues to build up and up. But it does get rather expensive very, very quickly. 849,000 all the way up to $1.6 million. You can purchase all areas of the map. The periphery here is $1.47 million to be able to purchase it, but you can purchase all of the map. Now, I will show before I go into animals, here we have crop types too. As it was said in the description, there are several additional crop types, rye, triticle, spelt, green rye, and field grass. And in the description, they were awesome enough to describe which ones are going to be harvested by which uh, harvester. So the rye, triticle, spelt, and field grass are all harvested with your normal combine harvesters. And the green rye here is harvested with mowers. So that is awesome. I really appreciate the uh, map maker specifying that. We do not have animals to start out with. Contracts are available on this map. No projection chains to start out with and no uh, collectibles. Now, if we take a look at mods specific to this map, starting with the buy menu, there are no mods specific to this map here, but under the build menu, if we take a look under the buildings, uh, nothing under sheds, nothing under silos, nothing under silo extensions, nothing under containers, but here under tools, we slide to the right, you will see the Groshnin there, the Vehicle Workshop, that is a mod specific to this map, and there is nothing under Farmhouses. Now under Productions, there is nothing under that whole tab, nothing under Animals, uh, nothing under de Decorations, but under the Landscaping, if we take a look here, we will see several additional painting swatches, but nothing for trees or plants. Now we go ahead and walk off down the street a little ways. All the way down here, down this little hedge line road, and here is our repair trigger and shop trigger.
Turning around, going back this way. Going around the back of this building, we have a series of cell points and a buy point here. Here we have the debris crusher. Tucked away inside here, this first one here is the agricultural trade liquids. That is a cell point. The second cell point here is the agricultural trade pallets. You can kind of tell which is which, the liquids being with these little liquid tanks here, so, uh, pallets being with the pallets right next to it. Around the back side here, right here we have a buy point. This is the agricultural trade buy point and the agricultural trade bulk materials sell point. And if you're wondering which items can be purchased at this particular location, you can come here to your price per thousand, scroll down, and you'll see wherever it says selling there, agricultural trade. So you can buy seeds here. You can, let's see, we've got, nope, that's a gas station. Oh, here we go. We got some more solid fertilizer, liquid fertilizer, uh, lime, herbicide. So it looks like just the kind of basics on the uh, basics for things that we need around the farm. Gonna head back out. We started right about here. And we're gonna walk down the road just a little ways. Have a gas station right here. Continuing down the road to our starting farm, which is right here. Now, because we're here at the starting farm, let's go ahead and take a look at our starting equipment. Starting with the buy menu under owned items, small tractors. We have the Fent Vario 311 and a Steyr 8150. Harvesters, the Rossel Mash Nova 330. Trailers, a Rudolph TDK 301 RP. Header for the Rossel Mash. We have cultivators, the Horse Toronto 3FX. Subsoilers, the Agrisim Combi Plow Gold 3M. Cedars, the Nordstein HK25 NS3030. Uh, fertilizer spreaders, the Amazon ZATS3200. Front loaders, the Hauer XB150. Front loader tools, the Albert Pallet Fork, Universal Bucket, and Bale Spike. We also have a trailer, header trailer for our uh, header here. We got the Nardi N40B and weights. We have Agco 2300 and 1100. And that is it. Now, starting over here, we have a sleep trigger. And that's it. That is it for our starting farm. There's no other. It's basically just storage. That's basically what we got here. Got a little bit of racking here. Uh, shelving where we can stack some stuff up. But other than that, that's really about it. Uh, very basic to start. So, moving on, we're actually going to grab our tractor right here and make our way through the rest of this map. Now, there is a sales point right there in front of me. I will come back to that later. We're just going to go off in this direction first. And there is a bit of distance between each one of these sell points, so there's going to be a little downtime in between, but you'll have plenty of opportunity to bring in and kind of soak in the beauty that is on this map. There are lots of very pretty locations going around here. Here we have the grain mill, 96000 to purchase this. Output here, input here. One of our starting fields right here. Following this around. Make a right here, and then a left into here. To my right, this is the cafe cell point. Make a left. 
and then down this little side path here all the way down there you see that is the family Steinman cell point now heading back around Now heading off the main path, going straight ahead. We're gonna be approaching the biogas plant, tucked away on this side street here, right here. So we have our liquid inputs here, solid inputs directly in front of me. Got two bunks for that. You have the purchasing trigger right here, and you can purchase the biogas for one, $1,558,972. Th Got a couple of big bunker silos right there in the back, and our liquid output, aka digestate, right there. Following this back out, Heading up to what I'm going to designate as farm number two, which is coming up here to the left. And we'll take a look at the map and we'll have to purchase the land in order to gain access. So you can see everything as we pull up. There's no triggers or anything like that, so we got to go to the map. So we started right about here on the map. We went to the shop area where we saw the repair trigger and shop trigger. We then came around here and we took in all these cell points and buy points, the debris crusher, the agricultural trade liquids, agricultural trade pallets, the uh, agriculture trade buy point, and the agricultural trade bulk materials. Came back out to the main road here, back up past the gas station to the main farm, saw the sleep trigger, grabbed the tractor, came back down here over to the grain mill, up and around to the cafe down we looked at the family Steinman cell point at a distance came back to the main road down to about here off the trail to where we came to see the biogas plant back up to this road to where we are right now which is farmland number 81 purchase this for 967,398 go ahead and purchase that and you see all the triggers are now available for you to see Directly in front of me, I have a chicken pasture, room for 30 chickens, eggs spawn here, feed goes here. We have a silo right here. Come around this side over here and tucked away in this bay right here. Open this up, we have a repair trigger. Big, big storage tucked away in here, two of them. Over here, we have another repair trigger right here. We have a liquid fertilizer tank, a solid fertilizer tank, and a Karma 16 tank. The Karma 16s are for seed and uh, mineral feed storage. And then tucked away right here, we have a sleep trigger. As well, power washer there, and fuel tank right there. And now we're making our way back around to that sail point that we passed by earlier, to my right. Right over here, that is the timber sails sail point. And I'll make a left. Whoops, 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 yeehaw. Got a little out of control there. Continue to follow this around. Now we're approaching what I designate as farm number three, right here to my left. And again, we have to purchase the land. So we were here at farm number two, took in all the sites there. We drove past timber sales, came up around to farmland number 79, $548,856 to purchase. And you'll see all this now pops up. So let's go ahead and look around here tucked away back here 
we have a sleep trigger right here. Bunch of beehives right here. We got three of them. And they're the big, uh, I think those are the 20, uh, no, 33. The pallet spawn for the honey is right here. Uh, let's see. We got tucked away in here, a repair trigger right there. Over in the back, though, we have a silo here and a chicken barn a room for 360 chickens. And that is it for this particular area. Let's grab the tractor and make our way through. So continuing down the street a little ways. stop right here right here we have the bakery you can purchase the bakery for fifty thousand dollars and tucked away in the back are the inputs and outputs input here I'll put here continuing down the road a little ways we're gonna be approaching what I'm referring to as Farm number four, part one. And you'll see why I say part one here in just a moment. So right here to my right. This is farm number four, part one. Stop right here. Take a look at the map. We were here at farm number three, came back out. We saw the bakery, then continue down the street to farmland number 78. Eight hundred and fifty three thousand four hundred and twenty four dollars. Go ahead and purchase that and whoops This is the cow farm that is mentioned in the description manure heap back here. We have a uh, slurry output here Feed input right here We have the animal feeder here where we have mineral feed input on this end. We have silage hay I'm sorry, silage, silage, straw, and hay here. We have room for 80 cows. Straw can go in here, and milk can come out here. And here we have a, uh, ooh, where was I? Oh, a bale storage right here. So this storage is empty. So let's go and grab our tra uh, tractor and make our way to the part, t uh, part two is what I'm calling that one. So farm number four, part one, we are on now. Farm number four, part two is just down the street. Here we go, we're approaching it right here. And again, we need to purchase this so all the triggers will pop up. Go down to farmland number 77, 518,240. And now all the triggers are appearing. We'll go here. We have a sheep barn right here. Wool spawns here. Food goes here. Room for 65 sheep. Some storage. We have a silo here. Fuel tank in the back. Repair trigger tucked away in here. We have a solid fertilizer uh, silo right here and another Karma 16. Again, seeds and mineral feed can go in there. I should say seeds and or mineral feed. Now we're continuing to head down the road a little ways. Having to backtrack ever so slightly. All right, make a right here. 
Now in front of me is the farmer's market sell point. Right here. Exit out the back. And now we are in for a very, very long trip down to the southern portion of the map. So I will go ahead and fast forward the speed here a little ways and get us there faster for you, a little slower for me. We'll see you in just a few. Alright, and we are approaching our next point of interest down here on the southern portion of the map. We'll stop right here. Here is the animal dealer. This is the location where you can come in and purchase your animals. You can use this icon directly or any pens and pastures that you have already pre-installed onto the map. You can go ahead and use this icon there as well. Now, if you use this icon, you will incur an additional fee based on the price of the animals. The, that fee is associated to a delivery fee having the animal dealer take the animals from this location and delivering wherever you have your pen and pasture set up on the map. And it can get expensive depending on how many animals that you are trying to purchase. An adult cow is $100 per adult cow. So the base price plus that delivery fee adds up really, really quickly. So how you can go about saving that additional money is bringing the animal trailer to this location and loading the animals directly into an animal trailer. You then deliver the animals yourself. You save that delivery fee. So very nice to go about that depending on the number of animals that you're going to get and then right next to it here is the animal dealer sell point and now we're going to hop back in the tractor head down the street just a little ways for our last set of interests on this map and we will take a look at the map once we get there to show where we've been and what we've seen up until this point and just down the road here is the fifth and final farm right here so let's take a look at the map so we were here at farm number four part two we then backtracked a little ways came down here we saw the farmers market and then came all the way down this stretch of road here to the animal dealer and animal dealer sell point and then down to here, farm number five, farmland 82 for $454,001. Purchase that. And now we go in here, and this is a very interesting farm. We open this door here, we have our silo right here, and I believe the output for the silo, yes, is right here next to it. Come through this gate here, we have a sleep trigger here. Now this is an interesting silo here. I think this is a combination of uh, hay loft where we can put in loose hay and bales, but I'm not quite sure how this works because I can't find a trigger for the bales to take them out. So what I have here, what appears to be the loose bale storage here, or the, the loose uh, hay and, and straw storage in here, but I would have imagine that this is bale storage up here i'm just guessing on that though uh just based on the you know bales that we have pictured in there uh this appears to be the output for the uh loose material because i cannot find an output or an outspout anywhere else if i go back behind here I'm not seeing anything. If I go inside the building, I wasn't seeing anything in here. So yeah, just nothing that I can think of for this particular area. So not 100% certain about this particular silo. 
but right here next to it is a pig barn. Room for 100 pigs. We have feed goes in here and slurry is out here. And that is it. That is the entire map of Groschnien. And now let's go hop in the tractor and render my opinion. What do I think of this map? Zero to five scale as per usual. Well, color palette I think is phenomenal. It is very, very lush and green, and I really like that. There's little bits of color here and there, but nothing too, like, cartoonish uh, to make it look like it's like in kind of a fairy tale. Uh, the little built-up areas are very, very nice. There's going to be very large bits of equipment needed based on some of the field sizes here, but you're also going to need a lot of little equipment as well. You're going to have to have a kind of a range of different size equipment because a lot of the sell points, a lot of the places where you're going to want to go to kind of offload product is going to be um, hard to get in and out of with anything other than small equipment. I meant to go the other way down the main stretch anyways um so yeah color palette is good the layout of this map i really like even though there's going to be a lot of downtime between going from place to place kind of thing but the only thing here on the southern portion of the map is this farm and the animal dealer that's it so if you set up shop here at this farm you're gonna do a lot of traveling trying to get back and forth to places um, but other than that, I mean, it's a really solid map. There are some things that I've observed that are a little bit jarring and a little bit off-putting. Um, like this road here, the kind of, the kind of flatness that the, uh, road texture has on, not in particular this road, but on other roads around the map, like the road we traveled in on, let me go and find that one real quick and I can kind of give a better example so this road here it just looks unnatural like there's just something about it that just really kind of seems off to me and you especially see that going further down the road here well, not so much where it's paved here but where it's supposed to be kind of this I don't know if this is supposed to be gravel or dirt but you can see just how unnatural that looks in this really harsh transition uh, you see those all over the place like here it looks a little bit more natural you have the kind of paved road here the paved side road and then it kind of leads into a little dirt path here and here that's done very nicely but like I said you also have these little issues here we have grass growing in the road like that's kind of an issue I mean there's bits of that here and there throughout the throughout the course of the map so there's little itty bitty things that are kind of jarring. Like again, you see that right there again. Other than that though, I think it's a pretty solid map. I really like the kind of topography and the way that the land kind of moves around. You've got some areas where you get some really large hills and large elevation shifts, but then you got just this kind of throughout most of it, just this very gentle rolling, hills to deal with the fields are going to be relatively easy to deal with relatively worker friendly um the other thing i've noticed is that a lot of the traffic from the traffic uh splines are i don't know if they're messed up or they're just very poorly timed but i was seeing that there was a lot of times where the traffic was getting hung up and clogged whether it's pedestrians walking in the streets or just the the traffic that itself was kind of wonky kind of thing they would try and turn into each other and then just block traffic for themselves um, so that's going to make it very difficult to kind of get around and just travel along the roadways but you can see just how nice the undulation is going uh, all around this map here. It's a very, very lovely map at times. We've got this nice little uh, wooded area that's just kind of traveling all along this main roadway here. It's just, it's just it's a very lovely map, and I really think that uh, with a little bit of TLC, with a little bit of love shown to this map, I think that this could be a really solid map. So 
on my zero to five scale, what would I give this? Well, in its current state with a couple of very tiny issues, I would probably say a three. But if the road textures were addressed, that would be a big one for me personally. The, the kind of flatness of the roads just makes it feel unnatural. If that was addressed, then this would probably be a solid four, a solid four. I, I really do like this map. I like that there's so many different styles and different sizes of fields. There's varying degrees on starting farms that you can select. You can select one versus another versus another. Um, and depending on the, on the style of play that you want to play. I mean, each farm is kind of set up just slightly different where you can do things differently depending on what you want to do. It's nice. You can go with a really small starting farm like what we start out with in new farmer mode. Or you can go with one of the big ones like this one here. Like this is a really massive uh, operation here. And you can take full advantage of it. It's, it's really nice. I think that this is a really nice map. You know, and like I said, you're going to have to uh, travel a long, long ways between the north and the south because everything's really concentrated here to the north. But uh, yeah, that's uh, that's how I feel about this map. I think they did a very, very good job. And that being said, I hope you enjoyed this map tour. If you did, please show me by liking, sharing, subscribing, following, commenting, doing all the things the algorithms enjoy you doing that shows you're engaged with this channel, enjoying the content. And that being said, I hope you have a fantastic day. Take care.